Yo, what's going on guys? Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about drones. Right now, in the consumer drone market, it's two top contenders for most portable drones that you can get the most bang for buck in terms of quality and portability. Both film at a whopping 100 megabytes per second at 4K. Both are small and portable, but why in the world does the DJI Mavic 2 Pro cost almost twice as much as the Mavic Air? That's what I'm here to answer today by highlighting some of its key features. Shout out to DJI for sending me over the Mavic 2 Pro to get this video to you guys. Really appreciate y'all. Now, when it comes to drones, I haven't owned a drone in years. I started droning a couple years ago. I had the original Phantom 3 Pro, then I upgraded that to the original Mavic Pro, and I haven't had a drone in years basically because of the reason I decided to sell that original Mavic Pro that I owned. Where I lived, it was boring. It was just a bunch of ugly trees that I just didn't find that aesthetically pleasing. So I just decided to sell it. It just sat in my backpack and never got any use. But the fact that I just moved to Atlanta, I'm seeing a lot more exciting scenery and I knew that I was gonna eventually want to pick up another drone. So the Mavic 2 Pro has been coming in clutch. And honestly, the difference between that original Mavic Pro that I own to the Mavic 2 Pro, it's literally night and day. Man, the difference in these two drones and what they can do and the overall quality that this one provides compared to that one, is crazy. So here are a couple features that set the Mavic 2 Pro so far apart from the DJI Mavic Air. The Mavic 2 Pro comes equipped with the co-engineered Hasselblad camera that features a one inch sensor, which is crazy to have in a drone. Now I know that this is gonna sound like a bunch of mumbo jumbo to a bunch of people, so Basically, this gives you three main benefits. The first of which is aperture adjustments while you're flying this drone. You can adjust the aperture on this camera while you're flying this drone all the way down to a 2.8, which gives you crazy benefits in itself. That right there allows you to have better low light capabilities. That also allows you to give you more flexibility when exposing your image to stay closer to the 180 degree rule. The second benefit of this camera sensor combination is better low light capabilities. You pair the one inch sensor with the 2.8 that you're able to go down an aperture and literally the low light shots that you can get on this drone are unmatched. I've been filming a ton of low light with this drone and the shots have been coming out crispy. I've been able to expose my image a lot better. And why don't all drones allow you to adjust the aperture in the shots that you're filming? Like that is such a huge benefit. And the third is 20 megapixel photos. Now, I don't know how many of you guys actually do take photos on your drone, but if you do, if this is something that you do, if you have an Instagram account where you like to post drone photography, this is a huge benefit. The photos are large, they're crisp, and they're literally sharp from edge to edge. This camera and sensor combination adds so many benefits to this drone in terms of overall quality and optics and visual content that you're able to create with it. Like I said, coming from the Mavic Pro, the original one to this Mavic 2 Pro, it's literally night and day. The amount of quality that you get in the overall footage as well as the photography that comes straight out of this drone. The next notable feature is the D-Log M 10-bit profile within this drone. If you've ever shot drone footage and also shot DSLR footage and tried to mesh them together into a sequence, then you know exactly how hard it can be to get the drone footage to match up perfectly with the DSLR or cinema grade camera that you may be using within this sequence. The 10-bit within this profile and this drone literally gives you so much smoother gradients when you're doing color grading. And it also allows you to add heavier color grades to your footage without the image breaking as easy. While I've been using this drone, this has literally been the only profile that I've been using throughout my entire experience. The color grading on it is simple, the colors come out fresh, and it's really easy to get your colors to match up with your DSLR footage, especially if you're filming log on your DSLR as well. This is something Something that I've really been enjoying about this drone. Another feature that is just absolutely game changing to the entire drone industry is the fact that you can hyperlapse on this camera. This hyperlapse feature in the Mavic 2 Pro literally takes away all of the annoyances, all of the hassle out of doing hyperlapses. You literally set a point, set another point, set where you want the drone to go, it goes, it takes the photos, and it even stitches the photos into a high quality video output straight in the drone. Like it literally does all the work for you. One of the reasons that I never go out and do hyperlapses with my DSLR is because I don't wanna take a picture, then walk up a step, then take another picture and just complete that process until I've gotten to the place where I want to end the hyperlapse. But literally on this drone, it makes the process so easy. This is something that I've been having a ton of fun with, but I gotta get me another battery, man, because I wanna do this for longer periods of time. All the hyperlapses that I've been filming on this have been super short just because I need another battery, but the fact that it's inside of this drone is literally game changing for the entire drone industry. The last significant difference that I've noticed between this drone and the Mavic Air 
that I don't really hear too many people talking about is the transmission system within the two. Now, one of my good friends, Creative Ryan, actually owns a Mavic Air. And while we're out droning and while we've been out droning over the past couple of weeks, the thing that I've consistently been noticing is that I am just able to fly my drone a lot further than he is and actually get a good output signal from the drone to my phone to see where I'm actually going and see how the image looks. And this is actually because of the transmission system. The transmission system in the Mavic 2 Pro is way different than the transmission system in the Mavic Air. The Mavic 2 Pro features the OcuSync 2.0 transmission system, which allows your drone to travel six kilometers and output a really clean 1080p signal to your phone so you can see the footage that you're filming and also where the drone's going. While the Mavic Air Air only allows the drone to travel up to four kilometers and output a 720p signal to your phone. So while you're droning, you just get a better feel of what your footage actually looks like while you're flying it. And also you can have the drone travel further and know where the drone is and not have the drone in danger while it's just out there flying. I think that this is one of the huge features of this drone and the differences between it and the Mavic Air that are substantial while you're out droning. I'm not the best drone pilot in the world. I'm actually pretty trash. So I need this to be able to output this signal as far as possible so I don't lose this drone, so I don't crash it, so I know what the footage looks like and I'm able to actually capture this footage the first time on and I have to do it a ton of different times. I've just found that consistently while flying a Mavic 2 Pro, I get a lot less of these problems than my homie Creative Ryan who was out droning with me using the Mavic Air. All in all though, these are two amazing drones. They both output really amazing video quality, but these are a couple key features to help you guys see why the Mavic 2 Pro costs almost twice as much as the Mavic Air. I've had a ton of fun flying the Mavic 2 Pro lately and the hyperlapse feature and all the other things that it offer definitely make it my favorite drone to fly at the current moment. I'm gonna go out on the limb and say that this might be the best drone out right now, especially for the price, the overall quality that it outputs, the compact design of it. Uh, I feel like this is the drone that makes quality meets portability right in the middle. Definitely worth the money in my personal opinion. Yeah, so if any of you guys have been interested in picking up a drone, whether it's the Mavic Air, the Mavic 2 Pro, the Mavic 2 Zoom, I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys to check it out. Make sure you guys hit that link, go check out the technical specs, go compare the drones, and hopefully I've helped you guys make a definite decision on which drone to pick up for yourself if you've been in the market. Before we get up out of here, I wanna read a couple comments from my previous video. First comment comes from Sammy Amy, and they say, in this platform filled with high energy content creators you are, a blessing. <laughs> I think that's hilarious, man. I think to an extent, you got to kind of hype yourself up a little bit on a YouTube platform to seem uh, more lively and excited than some of the stuff that you might be talking about, but I just try not to take it overboard. I'm a really chill, mellow person. Uh, I laugh a lot uh, and I try to reflect my actual personality on camera. So that's just me. But I mean, you know, I don't really hate the people who turn up every now and then. Next comment comes from Drew Vox. I think that's how you spell your last name, how you say your last name, my bad. <laughs> they say that C-Log sexy when she was on the 1DX. Y'all was just talking to Creative Ryan like two days ago about how Canon could easily update the Canon 1DX Mark II to the 1DX Mark III and add in just a couple key features and it would kill the game. Definitely C-Log was one of those things that I felt like the 1DX needed to have. Next comment comes from Nate Reimers. And they say, do you miss your GH5 with the stabilization? Absolutely. Every time it's time for me to film a music video, it's something that I miss about the GH5. The GH5 has been one of those cameras that I just loved, man. I loved a lot of things about the GH5. The variable frame rates, the IBIS was unmatched, man, those high bit rates and uh, those different resolutions that it did. The GH5 is a crazy camera, man. Definitely still one of the best out there. Next comment comes from a diva for life. And they say, I'm confused. Who is this for? You didn't make that clear. <laughs> it's for just in a studio, new film folks, not good for pics. <laughs> She's talking about the Canon EOS R. That's what a lot of these comments are coming from my previous video. I was talking about the Canon EOS R. And I guess I didn't quite make it clear who did I think that that camera was for, but I think the EOS R is for somebody who's looking to meet in the middle of uh, quality and convenience. Uh, it's a lot of cameras out there that have a lot of quality, but a lot of the things about it are inconvenient. Like I will personally say like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, Quality is amazing, but I feel like convenience is just kind of like low, you know what I mean? So I feel like if you want to meet right in the middle with convenience and easy use um, with quality, I feel like those are the people who it's for. The EOS R does amazing photography. Uh, it's decent at pretty much everything in video. It's just not the best at anything. So I think if you want to meet in the middle, I think that that's who this camera's for. People who 
I want to do YouTube or uh, you can do some amazing professional stuff with this as well if you want to get into using the Atmos uh, Ninja 5. It's just a lot of things that you could do with this camera, but I think in the simplest way that I can describe it is if you want to be ease of use uh, and convenience in the middle of quality. The next comment comes from Dre Vince. <laughs> Ironically, they say, why do you hate the Blackmagic Pocket 4K? Don't work though, Vince Dre from Africa, Uganda. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy that I just was talking about the Pocket Cinema 4K. I don't hate that camera. I think it's an amazing camera. I never said I hated it. Uh, I just kind of explained my uh, view of the camera when I did my review that I did not think that it was going to be actually in the cinema realm. So I just approached that use of that camera a little bit differently than uh, I should have. I should have definitely approached it like it was a cinema camera. I love that camera. I think it's an amazing camera. I think it's one of the best bang for buck cameras, but um, I think you also got to take into consideration what you do and how inconvenient a lot of the things about this camera could be for your workflow. Next comment comes from Christian Nayamali, and they say, uh, not an interesting question, but do you do photography too? Uh, I do take pictures here and there. I love taking pictures. I love photography. I just don't like to do it as a job. Once it becomes a job, it's just become something that I hate. I just like to go out and take pictures on the fly of certain things that I think are cool, but um, I just hate to do it for a job. Um, the next comment comes from Jimmy Blanco and they say, how did you adjust to picking up and moving to a new state? I'm going to be doing the same in the fall from a busy city to a slower paced city. I think that might be the hardest transition for me. That's a really good question. So for me, I moved from a really slow city to a city that I think is faster. Uh, but me personally, I've always had like this huge misconception about Atlanta. Like I would come here from time to time and chill with Creative Ryan and do shoots and stuff down here. But coming from a slower city, I always thought that it would be too fast for me. And it was just certain things that I hated about it, like traffic, uh, parking, and uh, you know, just little stuff like that. I think people drive really crazy here, but at the same time, once you live in Atlanta, you kind of get into your own little sector where you don't really have to go that far most of the time. So for me, I live in, I'm not gonna tell you where I live, but basically just say it's a little sector of Atlanta, right? And I really don't have to go on the highway most of the time. I really don't have to go far. I can go a mile to the grocery store. I go a mile to the gym. I can go a mile to wherever I need to go. And then it's only rarely that I have to go on the highway and go miles out and go downtown to the city where it's hectic and it's crazy and it's fast at. So um, I think it's really all about getting into a space that's comfortable for you to get it to feel as similar to the last place that you lived. So I really enjoy the slow paced city for me personally. Uh, and the fact that I'm able to just chill in my sector of Atlanta the majority of the time makes it easier for me. Um, I think it's just really all about appreciating what it is. Once you get into a slower city, you're gonna appreciate having less traffic. You're gonna appreciate having a place to park. You're gonna appreciate those little things, but don't let it deter your creativity too, man, because coming from a bigger city, it's a lot more opportunities most of the time, and it's a lot more creative spaces that you can get into. So um, for me, I think the transition was a little bit easier. I don't know how it would be if I lived in LA and I went to live in my little small city of Charlottesville where I lived. I feel like that would be a really hard transition for me. So uh, just stick it out, man, stay tough, try to stay creative and don't let it discourage you at all. The next comment comes from I'm Z. <laughs> And they say, dude, when are you gonna try the XC3? I want to eventually, man. I think the next camera that I'm gonna be trying out is the SL1. Uh, so that's gonna be really soon here. The next comment comes from William Harasmi. I think that's how you pronounce your last name, I don't know. Uh, but they say, did you switch laptops as well? We'd love to see a video on that if possible. So you're referring to the laptop that I was using in that review for the, the Canon EOS R. I didn't switch, I'm doing a little project for BNH um, on a gaming laptop, which I'll show you guys here really soon. Probably get that uploaded sometime next week. The next comment comes from Marsh Muzu Films. And they say, love your channel. Would love to link up one day and soak up more knowledge from you as I live in Atlanta. Definitely hoping uh, me improve my videos. That's dope, man. I'm glad that uh, my content is helping you. So I think that we're gonna set up another meetup here really soon in Atlanta to get all the creatives together, help you guys network with each other. Um, so that should be really dope. Make sure you guys keep an ear out for that if you live down in the Atlanta area. Uh, and that's it. That's gonna conclude my video. That's gonna conclude my comments. If you guys want an opportunity to be featured at the end of my next video with a shout out 
all you got to do is drop a comment down in the comment section. I'll make sure to look through those and choose off the most interesting and most helpful ones that I feel will help you guys. So, uh, yeah, man, if you have any other questions about the Mavic series that I can answer, make sure to drop those down in the comments. I'll make sure to get to those as well. Like I said, I'll leave a link down in the description for the people who are interested in droning. Um, make sure you guys head over there, check out the specs of the different drones and decide on one, man, if you're interested in droning. That's going to conclude my video, man. Make sure to drop it a like, comment, also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I'm out, guys. Peace.